Hey there guys, Reckoning here, and welcome back to Let's Read Kato Shoujo. In the last episode, we ended off Act 1, and we're starting on Act 2 that I do not remember the name of, for whatever reason. So, without further ado, since I don't think I have anything else to say... Actually, I just remembered something. But again, stupid joke. I don't know if I want to make it. So let's just start this episode. It's already half past eight, but this morning's class has not yet begun. We were supposed to have physics, but the teacher is nowhere to be seen. Had I known this beforehand, I would have slept in too. Suddenly, the classroom door slams open and Muto grunts his morning greeting to us from the doorway. Good morning, everyone. Good news, everyone. Muto looks like he's not slept at all. The stubble, his messy, messier than normal hair, and the stained dress shirt create a less than favorable impression. I guess he had fun last night at the festival, too. Excuse my being late, I ran into unexpected problems. I'm usually not one for festivals like this, but I hope you all had a good time. After all, these sorts of events are important for you all, since they give you a short reprieve from schoolwork. The class replies with various degrees of enthusiasm, enthusiasm, and Muto proceeds to take role and get started. Right then, today's subject is photon particle physics. Before long, I have descended into a comfortable coma-like state along with the rest of the class, letting Muto's rambling speeches pass through one ear next to the other without leaving a trace. Now, who could tell us the solution to this problem? He's written a rather easy equation on the blackboard. Desperately, he tries to get the class to participate. Nobody? Come on, guys. Nakai, how about you? Unfairly singled out and cornered, I give him an answer. It causes his shaggy features to twist into a genial smile that would scare little children senseless. Precisely! Good work, Nakai. I'm both disturbed and honored by the fact that he can remember my name only one week after I transferred here. From what I've seen, Muto has serious trouble remembering the names of anybody else in the class, and most of them have been here since the first year. The room settles into a dreary mood, students and teacher alike trying to get back on track after the festival. I fear last week must have been frantic for everyone. Not a minute too soon, the lunch bells ring. I can't remember who this is. Make way! Important business! I turn my head just in time to see other people scatter out of the way as someone charges from the far end of the corridor towards the stairwell. It's too late to realize that I'm standing in the middle of the corridor, directly in the way of the oncoming human projectile. I try to skip back through the doorway. Unfortunately, the person running toward me dodges in the same direction. In the following fraction of a second, several things come to mind in sequence, yet almost simultaneously. First, I recognize the girl who was on a collision course with me is Emmy. Second, I realize that it somehow feels very natural to be tackled by Emmy once again. I could almost feel comfortable if not, with, if not for the reflexive pain, panic and terror. Third, Emmy seems to be carrying a foot-tall stack of papers while burning in the hallway. She crashes into me, but at least the impact was a grazing one of my arm this time. Now, why does this always happen to me? Gee, I wonder, could I have... Could it possibly have anything to do with you burning through the corridor like you were on fire? Well, fire is delicious, you know. She whimpers regretfully, looking like a hurt puppy. The, set, the sight makes me regret my snappish comment the very instant it emerges from my lips. But I was in a hurry. I can tell. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Emmy wails weakly one last time and rubs her forehead as to expel the as if to expel the ache while her gaze sweeps over the hallway floor. As she notices her neat stack of papers spread all over the floor in one big mess, she lets out a horrified yelp. Ah, the printouts! Oh no, oh no, what am I gonna do? The teacher will give me help, they get dirty. They're probably fine, let's gather them back up, won't be a problem. We quickly round up the papers, and Emmy tries to sort the scattered pile in her hands back to the or orderly stack it was. Where are you going? Nowhere in particular, I guess. Didn't want to be left alone with Muto in the classroom. I think he has a hangover. Have you eaten lunch? Not yet, but I'm not feeling very hungry anyway. She looks at me incredulously, as if doubting my sanity for letting such a thing out of my mouth. You should go to the roof. I promised Ren I'd eat lunch with her. I bet she'd like company. Uh-oh. My lunches with Ren have been remarkably unsuccessful. I know where this conversation is going, and it's hard not to get drawn along, so I have no cho little choice but to play ball. Okay, I'll go pick up some bread or something first. Emmy smiles brightly before I say anything further. No, no, I'll go, I'll go and deliver these super quick and then go buy lunch for us. And Ren too, of course. What kind of bread do you like? It's fine, you really don't need to. 
Don't worry, it's alright. Consider it an apology. I'll be back before you know it. That's what I'm worried about. Don't get into another get don't get into another accident. Amy starts walking down the hall, but since she's still talking to me, she isn't watching where she's going. I won't. Famous last words. She's already jogging down the stairs as she shouts that not so reassuring promise back to me. Sighing quietly, I start plodding along in her wake. But instead of taking the stairs down, I climb upward. The stairwell up to the roof is unlit and just as creepy as it was before. The door squeaks weakly in protest as I push it open. Rin is there too, like Emmy said, lying on her back at the other end of the pebble-covered co rooftop for some reason. Predict so predicting something unnecessarily strange again, I walk to her as slowly as possible. Hello? She sounds very drowsy as she says that, stretching the wide end of the, the end of the word with a slurred voice. Despite that, her eyes are wide open. I look down at her, my shadow overlapping her face. What are you doing? Rin raises an eyebrow. I thought you had a heart problem, not an eye problem. She answers, challenging the rationale of my perfectly valid question without even tilting her head to look at me. Rin's smart-ass comments are infuriating. The worst thing is that I'm not sure if she's doing it on purpose or not. Alright then, let me rephrase. Why are you lying on your back on the rooftop? She gives a lazy shrug and sniffs dismissively. I'm trying to experience. People probably don't do this enough. What exactly are you trying to experience here? I can't really tell, but there's probably a reason people don't do... whatever. She's playing dodgeball with me again, answering my attempt at small talk with brittles I don't want to puzzle out. But I don't want to ignore her either. Yeah, but the reason is that everyone's too busy with their lives to pay attention to the really important things. Like watching the sky? She tears her gaze away from the sky and finally looks straight at me. The penetrating deepness of her eyes, once she focuses them on something, is startling. You know, if you were a girl, I could see your panties. If I was a girl, I wouldn't come this close to anyone who tried to sneak a peek at my panties. I have that much common sense. I wouldn't either. But sometimes it can't be avoided. Like now, for example. To tell you the truth, I don't even really want to peek at your panties, though. Underpants are the soul of a girl. You shouldn't peek at someone else's soul, even if you are not a girl. As a guy, I guess I can understand that. To us, there's some sort of half-mythical object that we can't quite comprehend. Yeah, that's exactly how I think about them, too. What a coincidence. It really is. So did you have world history in the morning class? I skipped class. To do this? Well, not actually doing what it looks like I'm doing, or at least I think that's what I'm doing. Or at least I think that what I'm doing doesn't look like what I look like, but from your perspective, probably. Yeah, I skipped class to do this. I guess whatever your reason is, it's as good as any. Giving into the tired feeling in my legs, I sit down on the roof next to Ren. The pebbles are not the most comfortable bed in the world, but if she can stand it, then I should be able to as well. What are you waiting for? Hmm? Try it. I bend my neck backward. Backwards. I have a feeling that's the wrong use of two. It's odd how I'm noticing, like, spelling and grammar errors, or what look like spelling and grammar errors now considering I've already done all this before. Anyway. Probably because I have selective dyslexia or something. And don't worry, I'm, I have not been diagnosed with dyslexia, but from, the, from these videos, it, I must have some kind of situational dyslexia. Anyway, with that out of the way, I bend my neck backwards to take a look at where she's looking. The silvery blue sky dotted by herds of cloud sheep fills my, vision, fills my, fills my field of vision entirely. While it's pretty, the view is nothing special, even though the weather is fair. I give a shrug, trying my best to imitate the nonchalant manner which Rin seems to have evolved to perfection, and lie down on my back. The stones poke on my back through my sh thin shirt whenever, whenever I shift my weight even a little, forcing me to keep as still as possible. I try to ignore the discomfort in my s myself, instead concentrating on the vastness over us. Far above, the summer clouds drift soundlessly across the dome of the sky. Neither of us has anything more to say. The silence covers the rooftop. The subdued noises of students in their lunch break, cicadas in the tree, and traffic buzzing past the score are humming pleasantly somewhere in the background. Listen, I had a great time yesterday. Did you? Well, to be honest, no, but it was alright. Probably, the, It was probably the longest time I've ever sat in one place without doing anything, which is kind of impressive. I try to make it sound as convincing as possible. Is that impressive? I think it is. I'm usually too restless to do anything like that. I think I had a good time, too. A cloud passes above us, casting its shadow on the school. 
A chill surges through me from the sudden change of sunlight to shade. I realize that summer is not in full bloom quite yet. The only measure of time passing is the slow pace of the clouds moving toward the town. Stray beams of golden sunlight leak through the gaps, blinding me for a moment whenever they hit me directly in the eyes. The blue of the sky looks so unreachable. This reminds me of the time I spent in the hospital, where I was bored out of my mind on a daily basis. Somehow it didn't matter after a while. I learned to appreciate other things besides watching TV and gossiping with people I didn't even like. A comprehensive sensation of calmness spreads from my sight to my other senses, finally hitting my brain. An airplane zooms by, leaving two thin contrails in its wake like a pair of chalk lines drawn from one end of the sky to the other. I wonder where it's heading to. The low din of its engines carries all the way down to my ears, although it's barely audible over the bracket from the quad. It's nice. It's nice, but I don't understand why this is more important than going to class. Isn't it good to do something you like? Every once in a while? Of course, but... What are you doing? Emmy has snuck up on us without either, without either noticing is only a step away from me, holding several packages wrapped in pra plastic film in her arms. She leans forward and peeks over me, overshadowing my face almost ex exactly the same way I overshadowed Rin before. I wonder how weird this looks, the two of us lying on our backs on the rooftop. That's what I asked, too. I would be more concerned about what you're doing. If I were you, I wouldn't come that close to people who could see your panties. Rin! Emmy's voice is scandalized, but she quickly takes a step backward, pressing her hands against the front of her skirt so abruptly that the parcels of bread she was carrying fall. I quickly avert my eyes and glance angrily at Ren. She pretends not to see me. Sao isn't like that, right? Right. Emmy scowls at Ren and crashes down to pick up the packages. She wipes the dust off them and skips lethally around me to Ren's other side where she sets herself down. Anyway, here's your bread. Sorry it took a while. That's alright. Thanks for treating me. I pull myself up into a sitting position and gracefully accept the bread Emmy, Emmy is offering. All three of us ravenously dig into the simple meal. The bread is surprisingly decent and readily fills my stomach. I follow from the corner of my eye the skill with which Ren handles her bread between her feet. I haven't seen you on the track in a few days. Oh, right. I figured it was too heavy a routine for me to start with. So you've been doing something else? I've been considering my options. She frowns, but doesn't pursue the issue further, for which I'm thankful. Emmy seems pretty headstrong, and I wouldn't really want to get pestered. And I wouldn't really want to get pestered by her about this on a daily basis. I have enough burdens to deal with with Misha, Shiz Shizune, and Misha already. We barely finished the lunch before the bells ring, calling us back to our classrooms. Hey, Jan. Misha waves at me as soon as I enter and starts talking before I even make my way across the classroom. How was your festival? Did you have fun? Um, still, so, still somewhat undecided on that. I'd say probably. Why? Well, ah, just asking, just asking. Her eyes glint in a way that tells me she's not just asking. I can't even start to guess her motives, though. As the well-timed entrance of the Ingr English teacher prevents us from talking further, Misha falls back to plan B. I was there all day with Shichan. We had a lot of fun. Weren't you supposed to be doing work? Don't worry, everything went really well. I don't reply to that, and she leaves me alone after Shizune demands her attention. My own attention, on the other hand, is directed at the windows. Now that I look at it from here, through the window and the foliage just outside, the sky seems smaller. I catch only small glimpses of blue. Everything else is a clutter of noise right in the middle of my field of vision. What experience did Rin want of the staring at the sky? Surely she's done it before. Everyone has. It's no use trying to guess her mind, but if I don't do that, I have no excuse for not concentrating on the teacher's words. I look at the scribbles appearing on the blackboard, trying to figure out their meaning with little success. English really is not my favorite subject. We have a strong mutual dislike for each other. Well, that's, that's understandable. Apparently English is one of the most difficult subjects to learn, where Spanish is one of the easiest. And speaking of which, for some reason, both my Spanish classes that I took in high school was filled with idiots because they just didn't they didn't bother to do the work that I, I don't know what the problems were I really don't because I maintained at least B both years having gone in knowing barely any Spanish and it's it was it's ridiculous the fact that I went in there knowing almost nothing and came out with you know like a 
at least a B average the entire year, and everybody else just... It's like they didn't bother or something. Some of them are like, oh, it's so hard. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's really not. It's It wasn't a difficult class. So I, I don't understand why they did so badly. When the test came around, they were like, they were praying. Why? Why? Wait. And this is like they would study. They would study like the night before and the night before that and the night before that, and they would still come in and fail the tests. I didn't study any of the two years. I got A's on practically every test. What was the deal? What is this? Seriously, what is the problem here? Anyway, English is difficult to learn, Spanish not so much. Thick, hot afternoon light invades the corridor, making the air feel heavy and lazy. My body feels weighed down by it as I drag it two doors down the hallway to the art classroom. Maybe this is part of the reason why I didn't join any clubs before. Afternoons just aren't suited for activity. I knock on the door of the art room and open it. A girl who was possibly doing something important with a scroll of paper she's carrying turns to reckon me and smiles in a sweet, if a bit confused, manner. Hello? This is the art club, right? Yep. You interested in joining? Yeah, in fact, I might have already done so, but we'll see. I give her a weak smile, and her own widens a notch, making me feel less nervous. Great, have a seat then. We'll start when the teacher gets here. Without even scouting the room for a good spot, I walk quite quickly to the back of the room and settle myself on a free seat apart from everyone else. A few other members are lounging in their seats, waiting for the teacher. Rin stands alone in a window seat, looking outside. She's the only person here that I know, although a guy I've never really gotten along with in my own class is here too. Nobody else comes to greet me. Maybe introductions are left for later? So I just settle for silent observation as well. One boy has sunglasses on, and outside indoors, we're not... Were we not at Yamaku? I bet. I'll bet he's the blind student Rin was talking about. The wait proves to be extremely short. Namiya walks over to stand behind his desk in three long strides, then gives a smile and a flamboyant greeting. Good afternoon, everyone. First things first, his cell there is a new member, so everyone get along with him. He winks at me unsettlingly. All eight members of the club, including myself, answer his greeting with considerably less enthusiasm. Excellent click there. Still, people finally straighten up and their seats begin to pay attention. I think some of you still have projects to work on, so please continue with those if you like. As for the rest, I was thinking today we could do some rough studies. How does that sound? Nobody answers except for some unintelligible murmurs, which Nami apparently interprets as unanimous approval. Alright then, everyone not working on other projects, choose a partner and draw a sketch of one another. We should be able to complete this today, but if not, we can continue it next time. Or even do it again if you find it interesting. Remember to pay attention to lighting and shadow, and give it your best. Pairing up? I feel pretty awkward about it, hardly knowing anyone here. I wish someone would ask me to be their partner. Well, it doesn't work that way, Hasao. It just doesn't. I worked... I worked the same. I sat there and waited. And then got stuck with the idiot. Or nobody. And... I would say the majority of the time, if I didn't have a partner, I just didn't do the work. Oh well. Amazing. Amazing. People stand up and move their chairs closer together, but nobody comes to me. Pretty soon, everyone else is paired off. Friends team up with each other, but I'm left alone. Well, there's Rin. She's sitting in the furthest corner of the classroom, still staring at the window and seemingly uninterested in taking part in exercise. Since she's the only other one without a partner, I walk to her seat. I can't see her face because her hair is covering most of it and she's looking away from me. Rin? I'll call out to her. No response. Hey, want to partner up? You're the only one I know here. She seems to finally acknowledge my presence, head turning like a robot as she looks to see who is addressing her. Rin doesn't answer and I don't want to repeat the question either. I'm sure she heard it the first time. Why doesn't she say anything? It can't be such an awful fate to be paired up with me, can it? She doesn't look at my face and instead stares directly at my chest and stomach. Oh, okay. Why not? Okay, good. Great. I'll get the stuff for us. 
Looking at the equipment Nami has prepared for today's meeting confuses me. Instead of graphite or pencils, we're apparently supposed to do ink sketches. I've never done anything like that before. The teacher, however, seems confident in my abilities to adapt to this medium. Simple! First you do the outlines in ink. You let them dry, and then you shade them with the dil diluted ink. This is called India ink. It works like watercolors. If you're uncomfortable with it, use a pen instead of a brush for the outlines. Got it. I pick, up, I pick up the paper, water cups, one pen for me, one brush for Ren, and ink for both of us, then turn to Ren. Grabbing a vacated chair from nearby, I seat myself directly opposite her. Do you want me to do it with my foot or my mouth? I like how they stop the music for that one. It's like they know. What did you say? She tilts her head, her brows form a questioning arch as if she doesn't understand that I didn't understand the question. I don't mind drawing either way. You'll look better if I do it with my foot, though. With your foot, then, if it's all the same to you. Not a good answer. Rin gets up from her seat and smile. And I don't know how I saw the word smile. Rin gets up from her seat and kicks off her sandals. In two fluid motions, she picks up the paper sheet and drops it on the floor, then snatches the brush between her toes before sitting on the floor in a weird half cross legged position. Although I've seen her do everything with her feet already, from eating to painting, this display of dexterity is so prodigious that I just stare at her, stunned. Rin contemplates her blank paper intently. The sharp tip of her brush hovers over the pa paper in anticipation. When she raises her head to see if I'm ready, I quickly turn my face away. I'll go first. Make a pose. What kind of a pose? Doesn't matter. That's the point. You have to make the sketch of the impression you get, not decide beforehand. I end up just sitting in my chair, my hands hands hanging limply between my knees. I look at her, and she looks at me a moment for, for a moment before beginning. Rin stares piercing, but impassive, as if she were trying to absorb a part of me into her own self. I feel like I'm physically shrinking under the pressure of her gaze. I get the feeling that for the first time since we met, Rin is actually looking at me instead of in my general direction. She sketches with confident, bold sweeps of the delicate brush, not caring about the potential destructive consequences of an accidentally misplaced stroke. After she's happy with the outline, she stands up to pose for me, stretching her back and legs. This time, she doesn't look at me. Instead, Rin lets her gaze wander out about the room. I'm relieved. It's easier to stare at someone when they are staring back at you. Even so, I find it hard to get the sketch going. I'm not especially artistically talented, so I, I'm scared my portrait will turn into something disfigured, apparently when compared to my partner's skill. I don't want to embarrass myself too badly on the first try. Rin is not helping the process, either. She doesn't stand still even for ten seconds, tilting her head from side to side to judge her drawing, biting at her lower lip, looking unsatisfied, and constantly shuffling around like she was on hot coals. I finally managed to make some headway on my sketch, and with the outlines done, we both start inking in the shadow and light. Namiya passes by and remarks on the beginnings of her sketches. Very good, standing figure is easier for a beginner to get a grasp of. But I didn't choose the pose. I look at him and then at Rin in confusion, but he's already moving on to the next pair, and Rin seems unresponsive. Just like when she was painting the mural, Rin has become so engrossed with her work that it seems she's shut me, the classroom, and the entire world itself out, out from her own little sphere of existence. Every now and then she leans backward, seemingly to get some perspective. Sometimes she bends forward, leaning down until her nose almost touches the paper. This rocking back and forth looks silly. Suddenly, Rin proves she hasn't completely drifted off into a world of her own and speaks. Are you having fun already? She doesn't raise her eyes from the drawing, which is a good thing. The breaking of the silence sent a jolt of surprise through me, as if I'd been electrocuted. I don't know yet. It's hard to say. I can't hear how she replies to my answer, because it, seem, it seems she's suddenly having a private, whispered conversation with her sketch. I don't understand how she can draw so well when she has the attention span of a butterfly. As it seems she lost her interest, I go back to working on my drawing as well. I try to add texture to Rin's hair to somehow grasp the way the golden afternoon sunlight sun lights her bright red tussle of flame and transfer it to my paper in shades of black and gray. Somehow, this pen and the bottle of ink seem like such lousy inadequate, inadequate tools for the task. Minutes pass, but the sketch doesn't magically look any more like Rin than it did before. Her voice wakes me up from my despair. What about now? Excuse me? Are you having fun already? Why do you keep asking that? Because it's a club, right? Clubs are meant to be fun. You join to have fun. Are you having fun? Is it important that I'm having fun? Yes. 
Okay, I'm having fun. Good. I wonder if I said that just to please her for early, or if I really meant it. I can't really decide which it was. I don't hate this, though. I can honestly say that much. It's good enough for now. As the allotted time to finish the studies quickly ticks away, I desperately try to improve my awful sketch, but it doesn't seem to get any better. I want to start again from scratch, but what would be the point? There's no time for that either. Okay, everyone, that's it for today. Please turn in the drawings on my desk, and I'll see you all next Monday. I glance at my portrait. It doesn't exactly look r like Rin. I guess you could say it portrays her, but that might be a bit generous. The nose and jaw look hideous, and the shading is terrible. Granted, it's my first attempt at drawing with ink, but it's still pretty bad. That's not bad. She sneaked up behind me while I was lost in thought. Damn it, I was hoping I could smuggle the portrait to the teacher without you seeing it. Why? I'm not really happy with it. I wish I could draw better. I just need some practice. Could you take my drawing to the teacher, too? I'm curious myself about how the sketch turned out, I peek at the picture. From the way Rune was drawing, it looked like she was really into it. It's excellent. Somehow the seemingly arbitrary strokes, strokes come together to form an image of my face. From the shape of my chin to the messy hair to the somewhat gloomy expression. Her sketch blows my mind. I don't recall... Actually, if I remember correctly, this choice and the next two choices don't really matter that much. So I suppose I could go with this one. Wow, I wish I was that good. I kind of embarrassed myself. Wouldn't you have to be me to be as good as me? I don't think you'd want to be me. No, I guess not. Maybe just some sort of approximation then. I take a closer look at her work. It's still glistening with slowly drying ink. You know, I look kind of grim here. You do look kind of grim. I mean, I agree, but it's also true otherwise, too. Like this you, not the you I made. I do? I think so, at least. Her simple statement makes me feel sudden, suddenly feel incredibly self-conscious. I feel like I need a mirror right now to confirm or debunk Rin. It's a nasty feeling. Maybe it's just her. I hope it's just her and that I don't look like that sketch to everyone. It's a good sketch, but somehow I get a really impressive feeling from it. Anyway, it looks really good. You really are amazing. Thanks. Glad I could draw you. You're an interesting person. You're an interesting person, too, but that didn't help me much. My self-deprecation has no limits today, but Ren ignores it all. I knew that I could never compare, but to see the difference with my own eyes is quite humbling. See, I tried to make you look like you think a lot, since you did a lot of thinking. And yeah, I might have overdone the fed up his life expression, but cynics are like that, right? I want to report something snappy, but Namiya gives me no time to think, ushering us to the door. Hurry up, you two! While we've been chatting, the rest of the club's taken their leave. I quickly pick up her drawings and take them to the teacher's desk before hurrying after Ren, who has already left the classroom. She's not in the hallway, to my surprise. I wonder where she managed to run off to in just a few seconds. Would have been nice to talk more. Well, not that I have much to say, except maybe get back at her for calling me a cynic. I embrace the fact that I'm a cynic. It's very obvious I'm a cynic. I had a friend in my English class, my now past and over senior year, that I was, I was always pointing out that I'm very sarcastic and very cynical. I accept it. I embrace that I'm cynical. It's surprisingly late. I already got used to school ending at the same time every day, so I can feel the extra hours in my head. And my gut. My growling stomach reminds me that I'm absolutely ravenous. I'm so hungry that I dare to try anything the cafeteria staff has deemed edible. Even when I seize today's delicacy, fried mystery lumps, my steely resolve doesn't fade. I stuff the dinner down without tasting it at all, which is probably for the best. I don't have much homework to do, but what little I have won't get done by itself, so I stroll toward the dormitories. Preparing for the post-homework law, I knock on Kenji's door. He responds from the other side, although I can't make out what he said. I try the door, but it's locked. After several seconds, the locks click open and he opens the door. Hi. Hey, could I borrow a book? The library was already closed after I got away from my club meeting. He's squinting even more than usual and his eyebrows are twitching nervously. Club? That's dangerous, man. Indoctrination, groupthink, brainwashing, you name it. High school clubs sow the seeds of conspiracy. Do you know how many secret societies have grown from high school clubs? Watch your back and don't get too deep in. You might not come back. Okay, Kenji. So, how about that book? Eh, uh, sure, but... Return and don't spoil any of my books. No drinks, no food stains, no bodily fluids. Capiche? Sure. Thanks. Instead of letting me in, he retreats from the door, closing it again. 
After a few seconds, he returns with a stack of three thick books and hands them over to me. Opening the top of most one, a familiar emblem stopped, stamped on the copyright page greets me. Uh, your books? These are from the school library. They are now mine. You stole these? What are you talking about, man? I've been liberating these from the oppressive feminist movement that controls the library. Please say oppressive feminist movement doesn't mean that poor like brilliant girl Yuko. She couldn't even oppress a wet towel. Kenji turns away mumbling something I can't make out and closes the door behind him. Before going to my own room, I enter the bathroom. While washing my hands, my eyes catch my reflection from the mirror above the sink. I try to look for the grimness Rin saw in me, but it's just the usual me inside the mirror that stares back. I attempt to tell myself that this is what I've always looked like, but I realize I don't remember what I looked like half a year ago. And that is probably as good as any point to end the video off. Hasao's... It has been brought to Hasao's attention that he looks grim to the world, but he can't see it. Though, it is true, he has changed quite a lot since, you know, that time in the snow. Little things can... I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just going to end off the video. So, I'm reckoning you, the viewer, can be like or favorite if you like this video. Leave me a comment down below with whatever you might want, want to put down in the comments. I'm sure you can think of something. Um, share this with your friends if you enjoyed it. You, well, really, share it with your friends if you think they might enjoy it. And um, until next time, keep on painting.